So, tonight we're embracing a new endeavor, and uh, I, I believe it's going to be a good endeavor. I'm enjoying. Um, so, I've, I've looked at some, but I'm not totally all the way there. As many of you know, part of my for doing this is to give us all a bit of a God to be interactive, um, to bring us together as a group, and most of all, to evaluate what is and what is not being a church member. And so uh, this doesn't have to do with your name being on a membership roll, although if you're not a member and uh, you faithfully attend, I encourage you to become a member. It is good. Um, but that's not the, the point of what we're doing. A member really is someone who, who comes and is a part of. And so that's that's where I'm looking at. Once again, it is important to have your name on, on as a membership talk more about that later. Uh, does anybody not have a book? That's the first thing. Anybody need a book? Everybody has one. Okay, great. So I think we're down to three books. I may order a couple more just because uh, I, I, I the love of if we grow and we get some more people to come. And also some folks have expressed an interest in wanting to read the book because they can't be here. So <clears throat> There are some things that I think are important for us as we start um, in rolling out this uh, Bible study. Uh, I am a church member. There are some things that we need to do. I think that we need to set some goals, right? So I think any time that we do something, there's a syllabus of goals that we need to accomplish. And so uh, those goals that I want us to do is to critically examine what it means to be a church member from God's point of view. To critically, critically examine what it means to be a church member from God's point of view. Now how we see it, or how we uh, look at it to be, but what does God say? How does God view us as members in the church? And uh, to be able to, uh, number two, to be able to generate ideas that will help all members to become engaged into the life of the church and ministry. I think there should be life in the church. There should be ministry in the church. So if we are a church member, how can we generate ideas that will help all members become more engaged in the life of the church and its ministry? Now, God's Word never, ever changes, and the principles of God's Word never changes. We're, uh, we are told not to add to, not to take away from the Word of God. So God's Word is standard. And even though some folks may say it's outdated or uh, old-fashioned, well, really, uh, the problem is that they're not looking at it from God's point of view. And as believers, our minds should be changed because we no longer think in the secular realm, but we think with the Spirit and we look at it from how God perceives things. So even though uh, we understand that God's Word doesn't change and the principles of God's Word uh, doesn't change, but the methodology of how we present God's Word and the ideas that we can use uh, in, 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 in uh, getting folks to become engaged and particularly ourselves engaged in, in church and in ministry. One of our biggest things we have around here is black life. Now, Brother Clay's probably didn't have a, a vision for black life. It wasn't his thing. I don't have the same vision Brother Clay's had. God has us here at a, 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 a different place and time, but we're still the same people who believe in the truth of God's Word. And so, as long as we're here, what are the methods? What, are, what ideas can we use to embrace us becoming members who are engaged in the life and the ministry of the church? And as we know, more participation, uh, more partition, participation makes it easier. 
It's not more one person doing everything. If we gain lots of people on board who get the same vision and lots of people do it, uh, the, 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 it becomes easier for everybody. And so that is what we need to do as, as church members, become uh, in a place where we generate those ideas that will help us become more engaged. And then to facilitate discussions of, 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 of barriers that, that, that may be there that keep us from being effective in our church and in the ministry the church has by members. What barriers are there? What are the barriers that are stopping someone from being used of God? Do they individually fix that? Is there something we need to do as a body? Uh, uh, but, but what are those barriers that keep us from being just actively involved in the life and in the ministry of uh, particularly as we look at Miracle Revival Church. Amen. I want to think that we have a life here, not just surviving or existing, but having life. And uh, you know what, what, what uh, pre prevents us from uh, being effective? What are those things that stop us? And so we bring discussion to that and, 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 and we bring remedy to that. Now, you can either write this down on a piece of paper, or I'm giving, going to give you a few moments just to think tonight. Amen. I'm going to give you a question. And the question is this. What exactly, what exactly, in your opinion, in your opinion, is a church member? And how would you describe to someone who doesn't go to church what a church member is? All right, so you can write it down, you can think about it, but I'm going to give you a few moments. Thank you. What exactly, in your opinion, is a church member? And how do you describe that to someone who doesn't go to church? If you don't write this down, right now, I encourage you to write this down tonight. We're not going to discuss this. This is for you to set the bar to see how it changes throughout the course of our study. What exactly, in your opinion, is a church member? How would you describe it to someone who doesn't go to church? Exactly, in your opinion, is a church member, and how would you describe it to someone who doesn't go to church? All right. So, modern day statistics, it says this. What are the benefits for me in being a church member? That is what the statistics say that people are looking for when they look at the church. What are the benefits in it for me for being a church member? Now, when you look at this book, Thomas Rayner, and some of you, he's, he's a pastor, but he's also uh, senior leadership of, of Lifeway uh, Christian. Uh, you, some of you may be familiar with Lifeway Christian bookstores. They have one in Jonestown. He's senior leadership in there. So he wrote this book. And he did a survey of 557 churches. And uh, out of those 557 churches, uh, he found that 90% were declining. Amen. They are declining. Uh, particularly when we look at when we believe that it's beneficial or the substance uh, 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 to why people uh, have membership. And so uh, when we looked at there is a 90% decline in church membership and folks going to church, it's interesting because statistically proven, people are living longer. Modern medicine, better eating habits, 
the knowledge that we have, people are living longer. Uh, communities are growing. So if people are living longer and communities are growing, and even in our community, you can look and you can see growth. We're not a metropolis. We're not a city that's busting. But, but there is growth. So if there is growth and, uh, and, and, and population and in people, but there's a decline in the church, what is the problem? Do you see that there's a problem? If there's a 90% decline in the church, but yet society is growing? Think about this. Before 1946, 66% of the population identified themselves as Christian. 66% of the population identified themselves as Christians. From 1980 to 2000, it's been established and estimated that 15% of, uh, uh, of the U.S. now uh, uh, identifies themselves as being Christians. From 1946 to 50 years later, we have a 66% say, I'm a Christian, I identify as a church member. And now, 50 years later, we find that that statistic is only 16%. Wow, that's a huge decrease in 50 years. And so I think that as we, and we're going to find out from this book, what is the problem? What is the decline? How can we fix that? What does it mean to be a church member? And so I'm going to have Sister Tina, and you can read in your book if you'd like, uh, A Tale of Two Church Members. If you read this, I hope you found it as interesting as I did. But Sister Tina, if you could read this from our book, page number one. Michael and Lucy began meeting for Monday morning breakfast at 6 o'clock over five months ago. They originally thought it would be a one-time event. They met in a couple's Bible study group in their church. For many different reasons, they hit it off and were becoming good friends. When Michael originally invited me to meet him, for breakfast on Monday morning several months ago, we have readily agreed. The two men enjoyed their time together so much that one time event became a weekly event. It is now rare for the two friends not to meet on Monday morning. Early in their friendship, the conversation focused on sports, family, and politics. They had much in common. Michael was 41, Liam was 39. They each had three kids, and they both and were both college football fanatics. Each of their teams was in the same football conference, but they were pretty fierce rivals as well. The guys thoroughly enjoyed trash talking the other's team in a friendly spirit. But one, but on this particular Monday morning, the conversation turned serious. Michael and his wife had noticed some changes in the demeanor of men in their Bible, in their group Bible studies. He no longer seemed as interested in studying and discussing the Bible as he did about as he did about talking about the church. And his comments were often critical about the congregation where the two families both had their memberships. Still Michael was called off guard on that particular Monday morning. Liam loved to poach eggs in, in the little restaurant. It was his regular order. But on this Monday morning he had not touched that. He was rarely even sipping his coffee. Liam didn't take it didn't take Liam long to get to the point. Michael, he began. Lane and I decided to leave the church. The call seemed to last minutes. Neither of the men seemed to know who 
appreciated at that moment. Michael held his tongue. Now it seemed that Liam's great mild brain was winding down. Liam's knees exhausted, ready to bring the conversation to a close. He did, however, make a few pointed comments and two insightful questions. Michael, Liam began softly, I really like you and Karen and your kids. All of you are a class act. He paused briefly. But you seem enthused about the church. You keep serving and contributing. Don't take me wrong, but I wonder at times if you're blind to all the problems in the church. Then Liam offered a, a closing that really spoke more than he realized. We are really two different types of church members, he stated. Why is that? Why do we have such different perspectives? Hmm. That was very interesting. That was very interesting. And so let's look at it. We call this in uh, we call this in our uh, CPE or clinical pastoral education. We call this case studies. So let's look at this case study. Let's see how how this case plays out, and uh, let's look at it from a biblical perspective. And so we find that there's Michael and Leah. We find that Michael's what 41, Leah's 39. They both uh, they meet in Bible study. They have a lot in common. They're obviously the same age. Uh, they hit it off, and their wives, uh, uh, they both have three children, they're both sports fanatics, and so it kind of all starts there, and, and, and so uh, as, as you see them being there together and, and things progressing, uh, uh, you, you see that, that, that things start to shift between Michael and Liam. Even though they're great friends, and this has all started because of church and Bible study, uh, that conversation starts small, but what they plan to do maybe once, maybe twice, turn into an every Monday morning event where they were coming together and uh, they were fellowshipping. And so uh, 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 one Monday morning after some time, uh, uh, Michael see a change in Leah. And so Liam is very abrupt, and Liam's very to the point, and he says to Michael, we're leaving the church. He's pretty just fed up with everything with the church. And uh, you'll find, you talk to people in the world, there's lots of people who say that. There's lots of people who's done that. Right? Right? So when we, we look, we see that Michael asks Liam some questions, and I think appropriately so. He says, Liam, why are you leaving the church? And uh, I love the way that, that, that Michael approaches softly, gently, uh, not condemning, but in a very concerned, he has a good relationship with Liam, and he wants to maintain it. Most of all, I think he's concerned for Liam's soul. He wants to see him spiritually do well, so that approach is important, even though they're friends. And so, uh, Let's look. What does he say? He, he says some things are. We'll look at we'll look at several things. But number one, one of the things he says, and I may have them out of order. It's okay. Uh, he says the pastor's not feeding us. We come to church to be fed. We want deeper things. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, so that may be so. That may be true. Uh, can I bring some perspective to it? Because I've heard this before. This isn't my first rodeo with you hearing this. So there's some things that I've noticed about growing and about eating. I don't have a problem with eating. It's a <laughs> right? So it is a work of life. It is a lifestyle change. And so I enjoy eating, you know. Um, uh, I, I realize something that full grown adults can feed themselves. Something we need to realize about the church is that there are people of every stage in the church. And the church is a teaching place. And I as a pastor have a responsibility that I need to teach and I need to preach. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, but I also know this, that when we grow up and we're adults, we learn to feed ourselves. So we can't shift all the blame in the church or the pastor. There comes a point where we have to be responsible, not just to the pastor, but to leadership. Maybe you're not feeling like you're getting all the deep things, but the shift is this. 
is that we need to learn sometimes to feed ourselves. I'm going to get back to these comments in just a few moments. The second thing that he says is this, that there's some good people in the church, but, but, but they're hypocrites. Let me tell you this. The church, hopefully, will always be going through a growing process. And as we grow, things do get messy sometimes. None of us like it. I mean, there's people who, unfortunately, their love for God is overridden by their lust and their emotions. Uh, sometimes people don't live by being driven by eternity as much as they live in the moment. That's all of us. That's all of us. And so we have to understand that people are in different processes, and we have to allow them to be in the process. He also says leadership doesn't care. Now, there is some good information that is there. We don't know everything about Pastor Robert's position, but, um, you know, uh, Liam's father-in-law does live 50 miles away. And he, we don't know if he goes to another church, but we do know the pastor has reached out to contact him, but that information really isn't divulged. Um, we know that maybe some church members have reached out. The pastor can't do everything. There could be some other people that, 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 that could be there. And so Liam summarizes it off and he says, Michael, you and your wife, Karen, and your kids, you're good, you're great people. I don't understand how you can keep going and serving there while you know what's going on. And then it comes down to this last statement. And this is the clincher. He says, I guess... We're just two different church members. That phrase says it all. We're two different church members. See, there's some things about church members that we have to understand. There are some who are going to faithfully go and they're going to serve. And no matter what happens, they're going to serve God. They're going to serve people. They're going to be there. They're going to be respectful. They're going to be loving. They're going to be embracing. And they're going to find a place behind ministry and in ministry. And then there's going to be the other type of church member that is going to always be looking at the negatives and pointing out the flaws. Which do you think now, I'm not talking about Mass America Revival Church. Which do you think most dictates the church world? By far, the second. A lot of time, you don't look at the other people. You look at what you get fed in them. That's why, that's why I always feel a problem. That way, I don't see what's going on back here. And Nah, and if you look at other people, what 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 kind of person ought to be? Because we are here to serve the Lord, not serve other people. Yes and no. So yes, we are here to serve the Lord, right. but we're also and, and we're also here to have fellowship with one another. Correct. Speak, yes, sir. Speak and everybody they come in. Yes. And, and, and show them the. Amen. Because if you don't show them love, why do you think they want to say? Right. They don't want to say. And and the preacher out there, if he's not feeding the people, they go somewhere else. Because I come so that I can be fed. Amen. So let me let me get to this. Let me say, and you're 100 percent right, bro. But let me be fair to Liam. Let me be fair to Liam. Liam did have some legitimate points. The pastor must be. What did Jesus say to Peter? If you love me, be my sheep. And so uh, the pastor's role is to teach and to preach in a deeper truth. It is the pastor's role. That uh, is my responsibility. And number two, Liam is right. There are going to be some hypocrites. There are always going to be people who live differently outside the church than what they do in the church. Let me move on my fancy 
you know, the Sheila said the same thing. It didn't fit in the truck. And you know what he said? He said, at least it's coming. Right. And maybe someday that you will be seen. Amen. That's right, Brother Eli. And if you're not being faithful, what kind of person are you? Sure. Amen. So congregations are weak because many church members have lost the biblical perspective of what it means to be a church member. Because we don't have a biblical understanding, we rate the church on a secular understanding. So let's look at this for a few moments. Because we don't have a biblical understanding, we rate the church on a secular understanding. And more of this is said as well in the book. I'm just giving, instead of just reading from the book. And so folks go to the YMCA or they go to their fraternity or their clubs or their uh, 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 different organizations. And uh, they feel like because they pay their dues, then they can pick and choose how active they want to be in the future. The YMCA has been really busy during January. People have paid their due. It'd be interesting to see when it comes March or April how it is. Because people pick and choose what they want to do in the future. Amen. But and so and so the ideology then sips uh, seeps into the church. The, well, I, 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 I give my tithe, I give my offering, and, and I can think about what else I want to do. I paid my dues. So that's not what the Bible says. That doesn't line up with biblical view of church membership, which we'll continue to talk about. That lines up with a secular view. And a secular view of church membership will never equate to biblical membership. Turn the pages on my notes. So most, most folks dangerously say, what can the church do for me? I hear this all the time. I hear folks say, and I understand as a church, we have to be visionary. And we have to look at the needs of what's around us. That will constantly be changing. There may be a need for younger kid ministry right now. But in the future, it may not be the younger, it may be the teen, or vice versa. There may not be a need right now for uh, a, 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 a widow's reach, uh, uh, outreach, because we don't, but we don't know that in the future. We don't, we don't know what all our needs will be in the future, so we constantly have to come back and evaluate what needs will be so that we can be very present in, in ministry where God wants us to be. However, we cannot look at the church that God has led us to and called us to and say, what can they do for me? God wants us to be looking and saying, God has brought me here. God has led me here. God has saved me here. What can I do for the church? Once again, when we get a church full of people that have a biblical view of membership versus a secular view of membership, it will change how we function as a church. And listen, I don't like hypocrites either. I don't like, I, I don't like uh, 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 folks who, who, who live substandard then. But the problem with church and church people is this. It's easy to look and point. Jesus talked about it. That little speck in someone else's eye when we have that beam in our own eye. Amen. When we never deal with our own issues and our own hypocrisies. And let me tell you, everybody in here, you own them. I own them. You own them. And when we learn to deal with our own hypocrisies, and we learn to give ourselves grace and love, it will in return help us to give grace and love to others that are in the church. In fact, I find sometimes in the church, and I'm not just saying our church, I'm saying in the church world, 
We are the very, we are the very worst at extending grace and love when that is what God gives most to us. So why shouldn't we be like Christ and give it to others? Amen. Amen. So we, 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 we have to deal with ourselves. And as we deal with ourselves, we will better be able to offer grace and peace to others. And so they look at membership upside down, looking about what can the church do for me without looking at what can I do to contribute to the church. And so in this study, we're going to evaluate what are those things that I can do to contribute to the church? Membership in the church should equate to membership in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is very, very big. And if we, if, if God calls to be part of a big body of Christ in one particular place, we would never be able to show the body of Christ to those in our local community. So God has designed the church to be able to show our community the body of Christ. And so we, our church should operate in our community showing everybody what Christ is like. Now, I... Sometimes that takes a little bit of rewiring of our brain. Some folks have, uh, think about God and Christ being this terrible monster who is going to zap them out because they've done something and they messed up. God is a God of grace and God is a God of mercy. However, God is also a God who holds us accountable. And so we give grace and mercy, but there is also accountability along with that. There's a balance to that. And so uh, it's not about a privilege. And the church is not about status. Just because you're the local lawyer and the local doctor doesn't mean that you should be the person who holds the highest position in the church. Because God does not equate status in, 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 in the world with equality and status in the church. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it works out that that's God's plan. He wants a lawyer and the doctor to be a part of the church. But not always. And so we have to understand that there can be corrupt people in the community. And it does not equate their position in the church. Folks have to be where God wants them to be no matter what status they're at in the church. So just because you have privilege in the community doesn't mean that you have privilege in the church. It's about the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so uh, uh, it's not about family history. I've heard some folks who actually told me this. I was here before this pastor, and I'll be here after this pastor. Well, bless your heart. Do you ever think that God brought the pastor here for a reason? <laughs> well, this is my seat in the church, Brother Al, right? This is my seat in the church because there's a placard on there that I gave this much money to purchase this seat. I'm going to give you a right to any seat. Amen. Uh, uh, there's no entitlement. Amen. Once again, it's not about what the church can do for me. It's killing church membership. But a true member is loving. Amen. A true member is serving the Father. To all. A true member is meeting people's needs. Meeting them where they are. A true member says this, but I'm going to be a team player. Even when it doesn't go my way. Even when it's not my preference. I'm going to be a team player. That's true membership. And what, what will I do to be a better member of the church. You see, we can blame the decrease in the percentage of church membership and folks identifying themselves as Christians on secular culture. We can blame it upon politics. We can blame it upon hypocrisies of church members. You can blame it upon uncaring pastors. But we find here that Thomas Rayner, 
he says, I am suggesting that we put the blame on the person looking in the mirror. Oh, I want our church to grow, folks. It has. We've seen great things. Uh, but how can it be better? How can it grow? How can we be the church that everybody wants to be a part of? And how can we show the body of Christ to our community? I know we're busy. You are not talking to empty space. I'm as busy as anybody else. But you know what? My busyness is not what the focus of the church is. My focus of the church is how can I contribute? And yes, I need to do my job as a pastor. But how do each one of us contribute to the church? Amen. The journey of discovering and rediscovering the privilege and the joy of church membership and to get caught up in the biblical meaning of church membership. So this little book of not quite 80 pages, it's 79 I think. So we look at this book and we're going to look at something that we can begin change. But change has to begin with us. So next week, we're going to look at, I will be a functioning church member. Let me hear your thoughts.